Hello and welcome back guys. This is Ibrahim Qureshi here and today I am very excited to bring my new session on vCenter Server 7. So I have written a lot of posts around this already because I was a part of Bloggers Early Access program by VMware for vExperts. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I was a vExpert last, last year 2019 and I'm a vExpert 2020 as well. My website is agileops.co.uk so be sure to subscribe my YouTube channel and my website. A special thanks to VMware, big thanks to Corey, uh, the vExpert advocacy manager and Amanda for allowing me to share these slides with uh, you guys on my channel. So let's get started. A quick disclaimer as uh, this is early access uh, presentation which we have. So this presentation may contain products which and features or functionality that are currently under development. Uh, so just be mindful of that. This overview of technology represents no commitment from VMware to deliver these features in any general availability which is VMware GA which is general availability when they release the GA. Um, Features are subjected to change and must not be included in contract purchase order or sales agreement of any kind. That's for the salespeople, so you can't promise people that this is coming in the next, next release because things may change, so just be mindful of that. Now, technical feasibility and market demand will change. Uh, the final delivery, pricing and packaging of uh, for the new uh, features, functionality and, and technology. If you have any questions, you can point it to me and I can reach out to the right VMware um, person who can help you and I will obviously introduce you to them. So you can reach out uh, to me at Twitter at Ibrahim Qureshi. This session was introduced to me from VMware early access program and it was a technical overview on vSphere which was a compute side of it. So in today's session we'll be looking at the vCenter and all these Cool features which we uh, which have which we have with vCenter server. So so first one is scalability and enhancements. So vCenter server scalability and enhancement. So we are here uh, we are comparing the vSphere 7 with vSphere 6.7. So you can see instantly um, host per vCenter was 2000, it has been increased to 2500. Powered on virtual machines on vCenter is 25000. In the previous version, which is 6.7, it has been increased to 30000. Now, link mode vCenter, link mode vCenter 15 per SSO domain. Um, this has been unchanged, it's still 15 per SSO uh, domain. But host, you can see a massive increase, um, like from 5,000 hosts, you have jumped to 15,000. So yeah, that's a big improvement. Powered on, powered on VMs has increased from 50,000 to 150,000, as you can imagine, because this is under link mode. Um, it is a lot you can um, you know manage from that. So vCenter server latency has been improved a lot. In the previous version, it was 100 milliseconds, and now um, the latency can be tolerated till 150 milliseconds. Uh, for the vCenter to ESX host, it's still 150, which was obviously from 6.7. And then vCenter, uh, vSphere client to the vCenter server is 100 milliseconds again. So let's look into multi homing feature. So VMware basically has now said that you can have multi home enabled on your vCenter server so you can have multiple NICs uh, as you can see in the scenario here we have one two three NICs what we need to remember is um, NIC one is reserved for vCenter HA so you need to make sure the NIC zero which is basically going to be the first one so maximum NICs limitation is four per vCenter uh, at the moment okay so let's look into the next topic, which is my interesting one. I have written a really nice blog around this one as well. So it is vCenter server profiles. Now, vCenter server profile is for making consistent configuration across all your vCenters. 
so and this is beneficial for people who are like organizations where we have more than you know two or three v centers uh, quite often it's quite hard to you know get the same consistency of uh, a network you know management network authentication and user configuration so what we can do now is vmware has introduced a, a rest apis which we can pull this configuration and then edit it accordingly to our need and then import um, well export it which is basically uh, exporting the configuration and then import it to the new vcenter servers or existing vcenter servers it is similar concept of what we had with host profiles which is across ESX host to make the consistency across the um, ESX host and you could see in compliance as well sometimes obviously if the host profile is not uh, remediated properly the compliance won't be there so it's similar here but obviously it will make your life easy if you have you know multi vcenter servers so profile can be maintained uh, can maintain version control between vcenter which is awesome we don't have the, those sort of things on esx host profiles so this is new again um easily revertible to last not good configuration by importing a valid vcenter server profile so how does it work basically vcenter server profiles rest it works on rest apis so there's no ui i'm afraid so far so what what we are seeing here these are the list uh, these are the rest api command the first one basically you can list and you can get the information what you can extract like management network authentication extra etc and then the second command you can uh, run on the api is the export which basically allows you to export the configuration and then again you can validate it by uh, uh, validate your configuration against uh, uh, vcenter server once it is valid then you can import it to the new vcenter server so another thing i wanted to add, uh, add here is um, this is also um, this also enables the automation tools like ansible puppet and chef uh, so this api is open to you know um, automation tools as well and apis are also found in developer center under appliance apis so that's where you you can find it okay guys so let's have a look to get the consistent configuration across all the v centers basically you have your main v center you export the application config network config and user privileges config and then you validate and import across multiple v centers yeah and what you can see is the export configuration is understandable json format so it's in written under json so obviously when you export it it's a json file and then we can export uh, we can propagate propagate the export configuration to multiple vcenter server so the limit is 100 the maximum limit is 100 so far and this is another scenario where you can validate it it can come up as valid or invalid so you have exported it it's a json file these are the information you have application you know uh, sorry um appliance config network user privileges so you basically modify it according to your new need and then you validate it so if it's invalid then it basically returns an invalid and then if it's valid then you basically apply it to the target machine let's jump into the next topic which is the content library this is also another interesting one um, which has a lot of enhancements so basically vmware has introduced a new concept with the content library it's called check-in and check-out um, so what we can do is we have our templates which we have on the content library what we can now do is we can modify it according to our need obviously either it's esx patches or installing an application on on the template and you also have version control as you can see here so quick so it allows you to quickly find vm templates and versions check out the template for editing check in templates to save uh, changes made and revert to the previous version so it's like a snapshot you can revert to a previous version classic and new view of summary so this is the summary page you can see you know there is a little bit change here as well where you can see version version control and everything and you can all, as i said check in and check out so another thing is over here you can see 
you can tag it and you can um, basically find it quickly uh, the version tab basically is a little bit enhanced here you can see that they, they are different versions and it shows us what is the difference here so the new version tab also allows quick history view of the edits so what edits have been done and what has been changed and ver uh, versioning information only available when the VM is stored in a content library so what that means is if you have the template stored in your data store it's not going to work it has to be in the content library so quite often we leave the templates in the data stores uh, this is specifically for content library so obviously you have to have that template you have to have this particular template which you're working on within the content library to make it to uh, to use all these new features okay and then in the advanced tab you can go in and you have an option to edit all this feature edit auto sync frequency and performance and optimization it's a really cool feature if you have like four or five vCenters and you want to have one consistent copy of a template you don't want to you know update the template on one vCenter server and then copy it across you know four vCenter so, uh, servers every time you have it on your content library and you can set it how much you want to replicate you know and how many times so you, you can say auto uh, sync frequency and you can leave it you just need, you don't need to worry about you know copying the updating template and copying across all the vCenters and stuff like that so yeah I would strongly suggest that you start using if you haven't been using this so next topic um, hardware 17 so in the new um, hardware 17 basically what they have done is uh, they have enabled watchdog timer for for the VM application as well so without a watchdog timer guest OS an application does not have a standard way to know that they have crashed so it could be used like us on the SQL or database servers so where the application has crashed so a watchdog timer helps by restarting resetting the VM if the guest OS is no longer responding so it basically keeps an eye on the OS and it can basically re reset the VM this is especially important for cluster application like databases and file systems so good feature which um, which can improve the availability of the application um, if the VM goes belly up then basically watch your timer basically can re reset the VM for you Another thing which is come with the hardware version 7 and again this is only available if you are running vCenter 7 and running hardware version 17 is the precision check. So we know that we allow most of the VMs like potentially most of the organizations I have worked on they allow uh, the VM sorry the VMs to update the time from the ESX host which is a good way to do anyway because you just need to point your ESX servers to the NTP servers now what we can have is precision check which means sub millisecond timekeeping which is really awesome so precision time protocol helps for financial and scientific application sub millisecond accuracy requires VM hardware 17 as I discussed requires both an in guest device and uh, ESX service to be enabled which which is obviously how you do it it to be enabled choose between NTP or PTP which is a precision time protocol so yeah that's that's the main enhancement in the hardware version 17 next up is another interesting topic which uh, which Intel has been developing recently uh, which is called uh, security enclave before application can use VSGS which is software guard extensions the CPU in the system must support Intel Software Guard extension. The system BIOS must support Intel Software Guard, which is obvious because your BIOS should support it first of all. Intel Software Guard extension must be enabled in the BIOS. It's not just basically having it there. You need to obviously enable it. Intel Software Guard extension platform software or PSW must be installed on the system. So there is a platform software which is called PSW and that 
needs to be available and installed on the system for you to be able to use this now i have been telling what you need to do for having this enabled but what is it ex exactly it's basically hiding or keeping a secret from your operating system and the hypervisor so you can have data which is sensitive and your uh, your developer can choose to you know um, use the intel software guard uh, secure enclaves to protect that data so all your data which uh, the developers are uh, hiding is basically hidden from the os we are not saying that the os or the esx hypervisor is unsecure or they you know they uh, they have a problem but we all know we run sometimes we run you know on cloud we run you know multi tenants and everything like that uh, which basically may have some uh, exposure to uh, well unwanted parties can access those data so that is why you have your application your operating system is trying to access it and virtual machine is trying to access it virtual machine manager is trying to access it so you get the you get the access only via the right channel that's also very important uh, to keep the uh, data consistent another thing we need to remember is uh, this is intel only amd has sev which is different approach and application can move sensitive logic and and storage in um, in the enclave intel software guard extension allows applications to work with hardware to create secure enclave that cannot be viewed by the guest or the hypervisor as i said now what is the disadvantage i guess obviously it's a good feature and vmware obviously is supporting it so that people if you want to use it if you have a customer you can say if you do want to use it this is the hardware you need to buy and you need to be running e vSphere 7 and we still obviously visually support it but what is the downside the downside is instantly because you're not sharing the memory from uh, with the hypervisor with the uh, guest OS and the hypervisor so you instantly lose the option to take snapshots because obviously these these things um, are very tightly coupled with you know memory and again you can't have vmotion enabled on these vms so that's a downside which you need to remember okay last topic on the agenda today is simplified certificate management so let's quickly dive into it as you know certificate management has a uh, with vsphere 6.x like i don't know whether you guys done it i have done it in 6.5 recently and it's a lengthy process just to update the certificates on we sent a server and if you have got a PSC separate which we always did with 6.x you need to upgrade the PSC certificate and then you need to upgrade the we sent a certificates as well um, lengthy process so many certificates to handle so you can see the page here this is the old vSphere 6 certificate management page and look at this one this is the vSphere 7 certificate management and it's a lot sim simpler so a big thanks to the engineering team to you know get this done and um, I guess obviously this is one of the important benefit for admins uh, which they can save time with you know upgrading certificates so thank you very much for watching uh, question of the day today is what is the new feature that you like comment on below and let me know uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get all my new updates. Enjoy watching and keep sharing guys. Cheers. Bye.